Good morning, good morning, dearly beloved, greater godly missionary Baptist Church. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and certainly we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. Amen. This is this Memorial Day weekend. Amen. And I just want to say God bless each and every one of you as we remember our uh, military, amen, who have fought for our country and for the safety of our nation. God bless you all. And those of you viewing by YouTube this morning, uh, I just want you to know God bless you. And uh, we love you here at Greater Galilee. Amen. And we appreciate you tuning in this morning. We have something in store for you today. We have a great lady. Amen. Uh, who we are about to introduce to you. Uh, she is one who is no stranger to those around the city of Little Rock. Amen. A, a woman of God who, who know how to rightly divide the word of God. Amen. And uh, certainly she has a she has a story. She's a mother, a wife, a man of uh, fact, mother of eight children and about twelve grandchildren, I think. So, <laughs> so she's a she's a, a family woman, and she really loved the Lord, Amen. And I'm talking, I'm talking about no other than the sister Vonda Molden, who's married to Minister. Uh, Dana Molden, amen. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm excited and I'm going to do this. I'm going to attempt to do a song for you, amen. And uh, then the next voice you will hear will be that of our own Sister Vanda Molden. And I just want you to listen and I promise you, you will get something out of her message on this day. It's amazing to me All the things that you do for me I've never seen His face It would satisfy My curiosity the day that I see his face He gave me the gift of life Before I ever knew who he was He paid the ultimate price At Calvary shed his blood how I love him so He supplied me one of my needs I don't always do right But he keep on blessing me Oh, it's amazing Oh I've never seen his face There were times when I could feel <laughs> Him ever so close to me He was right there leading me Guiding me And protecting me I've never had to walk alone He was always there I know I was in his care. Ooh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 let me say that one more time. There were times when I could feel never so close to me. It was right there leading me guiding me and protecting me I've 
never had to walk alone. <laughs> he was always there, even facing me. I know I'm in his care. Oh, it's amazing. Scripture tells us that one day the trump is going to sound. It's going to sound so loud it's going to wake up the dead. Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back after his church. One without a spot or a wrinkle. I don't know about you, but I want to go back with him when he comes. The Bible says those of us of us who are left here and remain on his return we will be caught up and changed in the twinkling of an eye hallelujah and we will behold his face we will see Jesus I don't know about you this is Memorial Day and we have a lot of loved ones who have gone on I don't know if I have a mother there I have a father there some of you do too I have a brother, I have sisters there who've gone on to be with the Lord, but they're going to come back with him when he comes. And I want to be one to meet them. I want to, I have a son over there, a young son. I want to see him again. But most of all, I want to see the one who made all this possible. Hallelujah. Behold, 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 we shall behold, behold his face, we shall behold his cares of past home at last, oh, I want to see Jesus. the one who bled and died for me on Calvary. Oh, I want to see Jesus. We're going to see his face. His face I've never seen. But I love him anyway, I love him anyway, I love him anyway. One day we shall behold his face. say good morning everyone good morning it's a good day it is a very good day another day that the Lord has made and we are glad and we will rejoice and we will continue to rejoice in it thank God for this day um, it's always I love to acknowledge my head he's already come before me but I just want to praise God for him this morning for his stand and his dedication and him always willing and ready to do whatever it is that is needed for the house of God. I said, it doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't go unnoticed, right? He's not a selfish man at all. He's a giving man and I thank God for him. Um, it's a great opportunity to be able to stand here and hopefully proclaim God's word to a way where you can understand it and be able to apply it to your life and, and I as well. 
But if, um, when I come and speak with the word of God, I know that it's not me speaking, it's him using me to speak. And, and he speaks to me. And I thank you, and I thank him for that. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and go into a word of prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and get into this lesson. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, come right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. First of all, God, just saying thank you. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the breath of life this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for our health and strength as well as it is, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for just loving us in spite of all that we've done or have not done, God. We thank you for loving our loved ones, Lord God. We thank you for covering them in your blood, Father, and keeping them safe. When we couldn't wrap our arms around them, Lord God, you still had them wrapped up and caught up in your bosom, Lord God. And we knew that they were okay. We thank you for that this morning, Lord God. Father, we come before you, Lord God, just giving you the praise and honor and glory that only you are worthy of receiving, Father, because you are the Almighty. You are the good and great one, Lord God, that has blessed us so well, and we are so grateful unto you. Father, we just ask, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, Father, that any word that is being spoken this morning, Father, that it will be pleasing in your sight, and it will be pleasurable in your ears, Lord God, and that you will get the glory out of it, Father. Lord, we just pray that you are preparing hearts right now, Father, to receive that which you have prepared for them, Lord, so that they may apply it, Lord God, accordingly, to their lives as needed, Lord God, and as directed. We just thank you and praise you, God, for all that you're doing, all that you have done, and all that you will do, because you are ever doing, God, and we love you for that. We thank you and praise you for all things. Amen. Amen. I did want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to the ladies of Greater Galilee, um, my sisterhood. I just want you to know that Sister Mona is still thinking about you, still praying for you, and still looking forward to holding you in her arms. Because we have always been and always will be women of love at Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. And we are nothing short of that at this time. We're just not able to express it the way that we have, have been able to do in the past. But that's okay. That's okay. God knows what's going on. He, go, he knows what he's doing. <clears throat> and in spite of what is going on, his love is still prevailing greatly in our hearts toward one another. And I love you. I see your big kiss. And I just wish I could hug you. Sometimes I see one of my sisters and we just do this right here and we shake like we're together. But we just love each other and uh, nothing has changed that. Space and Space and time cannot change that. Thank God for that. All right, so let's go on into this lesson. <clears throat> Today, our message, I just want to let you know that it's coming from a very familiar passage of Scripture. It speaks about Jesus, a man, a woman, and a child. What happens in this story or the sequence of events is, is profoundly important to us. And it's so profoundly important to us that it is recorded in the first three Gospels of the New Testament, okay? It's referred in by Matthew, who was one of Jesus' appointed, and his, one of his uh, original twelve. Also, it's written in the book of Mark by one who was a follower of Peter. And it's in the book of Luke, who was a close friend of Paul. And Luke also wrote the book of Acts. So this is a very, very, very familiar scripture with us, okay? And I want you to know before we read the scripture, I did not choose Matthew's account because he actually walked with Jesus as one of the original 12. I chose Matthew because he did it in nine verses, what Luke did in 14 and what Mark did in 18. For the sake of time, I went with the short version, okay? With all of that being said, first of all, I want to give you what I call my supporting scriptures, and then we'll go into what is the key scripture. The supporting scriptures are found in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 42, and they're found in Luke chapter 8, verses 41 through 55. Those are the supporting scriptures. And our main scripture is found in Matthew chapter 9, 
verses 18 through 26. And I will read those. Okay, and then they read as follows. Let's go on this again. I want everyone to know that we are in, cha in Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. And it reads as follows, and I am reading today from the New King James Version. Okay? It says, While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be a good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all that land. Amen. Okay. So this is a very familiar scripture. And I do have a, a title for the lesson. And the title that I have for this message today is Hurry Up and Wait. Again, the title is Hurry Up and Wait. And um, I will be addressing three points. And they are, number one, the plea. Number two, the turnaround. And number three, the blessing. The plea, the turnaround, and the blessing. Now, when I thought about the title of this lesson, hurry up and wait, a couple of things came to my mind. One of them was I was in the military. And one of the things that we did a lot was we hurried up and we waited. We hurried to get in, into formation, then we stood there and we had to wait. We hurried up to get into the child line, but then we stood there and we had to wait. We hurried up to get in the shot line, but we stood there, we had to wait. Everything was a rush to get there, but when we got there, we had to wait. So hurry up and wait. We had to wait for something to happen, amen? So what happened is um, we got to eat, the sergeants came out, and we got the shots. You would think you wouldn't want to be in a line to get a shot, but we had to hurry up, and then we waited on that, and that was what we got. Okay, so sometimes what you're waiting on is not always desirable, but it is needed. And another thing that I thought about when I, when I had this title was my husband in the morning when we're getting ready to go somewhere. He hurries up and gets dressed, and then he has to wait on me. Hurry up and wait. So I live, still live that in my life today. Hurry up and wait. But in our story today, I wanted to... Uh, address a different situation. I know we're all familiar with this scripture, but I wanted to start off at, at the beginning of the scripture where we said, while he spoke, and we're talking about while Jesus spoke, he was speaking these things, behold, a ruler came and worshiped him. Now, in our other uh, accounts of this, it gives us a name for the ruler. His name was Jairus, and he was a ruler in the synagogue, okay? So, so um, that meant that he was already acquainted with God. He was a man of God. He actually held a position in God's house. For us, we would say minister, pastor. Okay, so he was a ruler. And he came and he worshiped Jesus saying, my daughter has just died. Okay, but if you will come and lay your hands on her, she will live. Okay, so he came to her, and it says that he, he started speaking while Jesus was speaking. So he did that in a hurry. He was very quick to speak to Jesus on this because this was an urgent situation for him. 
So he had to do it as quick as possible because he believed that it just happened. So if it just happened, that means it's, it's a chance this situation can be reversed because I'm talking to Jesus here. So he was in a hurry to get to Jesus, but he could not be dis totally disrespectful and not allow Jesus to speak. But boy, he, he, he just got a little, he was feeling like I'm in a place of desperation. I need Jesus to move on my behalf. And so that is what he did. He asked Jesus to come and move on his behalf. And he's talking about his child. y'all. Now, most of the people that, are, that will hear this message either have a child, will have a child, or has been somebody's child. So you know how important this message is. You know how important this man's plea is. His, you know how desperate he is at this point in time. This is something that is very important to him, so important to him, he probably can't think about anything else right now. But my baby is past. But you, you, Jesus, you have the power. You and you alone have the power to change my situation and give me my baby back. So he's desperate. And as being a mother, as Pastor mentioned, I'm a mother of eight. I hope he ain't trying to tell me something. I have 10 grandchildren. Okay, 10. All right, last count, 10. But I praise God for every one of them. And I praise God for all of my children. And I cannot imagine my life without one. I have been fortunate not to have to. And I thank God for that. I don't take that for granted. I do not take that for granted. I thank God. But I'm just saying right here, we have, as people who have been born of a woman, when it comes down to the possibility of one of our loved ones being taken from here, even though we know they're going to a better place, we still, our hearts are heavy and hurting because we don't want that to happen. That's the condition of this man. He's a ruler. That don't mean nothing. When you are in a position, it does not matter what position you hold and where you hold it. There are some things that happen in our life. It's so level the playing field, so to speak. I don't care. Jesus, I need you like, like my servants need you. I need you to come and make a change that only you are able to do. And a lot of times that's how we feel. We go to Jesus and we know that there's no one, no one, even the ones that would are not able to address our situation and give us and bring life into whatever is going on with us. So we go to Jesus because we don't know nowhere else to go. And so since this man came to Jesus and he, Jesus heard him, and I don't believe it was because of who he was as much as it was because of the faith that the man showed at the beginning of his request to the Lord. At the beginning, he had faith, and faith moves Jesus in your direction. So what happened? Jesus got to moving on this man's behalf. Is that, is that good? Jesus started moving on his behalf. He was sitting, because when he went to him, Jesus was still in place. But now, Jesus and his disciples, Jesus and his followers, are moving on the behalf of one man's faith and knowing that God can do things that others just don't even have the power or ability to do. So he moved Jesus. So when we go to God in faith and in prayer, we have to believe that we are moving Jesus. We are moving his angels, and they are working and moving on our behalf just because there is no respect of person. What he did back then, he's doing it right now, here and today. And we got it going on like that, y'all. So when we go to God, always believe and trust and have the faith and know that you move God. Just like this man, he moved God. Amen? He had him moving and working on his behalf. And here we go. Jesus is following him. Jesus is on the move. And he's going to heal. He's going to heal my baby because I don't believe that her, this is a dead situation. I have faith in Jesus 
This is none of their situation. And I done went to him, and he's moving on my behalf, and we are on our way. And then all of a sudden, according to this version of, of the Bible, it says, suddenly, suddenly, someone touched him. The him is he suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Okay, that's, we all know the story, and it, in an instant she was made whole. But see, here's the thing. When she touched him, he felt the virtue leave him. He didn't know who touched him, but he felt something. See, when we reach out and touch Jesus, he feels it. And so he felt something. He, she didn't touch his physical. She touched his material. And he felt the virtue leave. And Jesus, being who he is, he was like, he won't know who touched him. Jesus won't see. See, it's different now. We already, we already know we're always in the presence of the Lord. But see, this woman had to move in a hurry because, you know, Jesus was on the move. So if she didn't suddenly touch him, he would have been out of reach because he wasn't waiting and expecting her to touch him. He had his focus on going to the ruler's house to minister to what he had requested of him. But then somebody touched him. And what did he do? He turned around. Okay, now, remember, you know, we already got somebody that's already depending on Jesus to do something for them and expecting him, leading him, and all of a sudden, Jesus turned around. Okay? Now, we're dealing with the turnaround. First, that was the plea. I need you to come and heal my daughter. You know, that was his plea. That was his plea. Now, the lady, she had a plea, but she did not make her plea unto Jesus. She had an inner faith. She had not expressed her faith to him, but she had a faith in him, okay? But this man had expressed his faith, and he had Jesus following him, and then Jesus turned around. What? <laughs> you know, we would like to feel and believe in our hearts that when we see our sisters and brothers being blessed, and we're waiting on Jesus to bless us, that we're all going to feel real good about that. But the truth is, you know, sometimes our situations are so bad. I can see you blessing them, and I'm wondering, like, what about me? Because at first, I saw Jesus moving on my behalf. But now, for some reason, it seems like, like he just turned around on me. And he's not heading in my direction anymore. What's up with that, Jesus? You know, and that's sometimes how we feel. And I believe that's how, with him, not, with him, he was a man of God. He was a ruler. He was in a position. It, it affected a lot of people. But you got to realize, at this point in his life, position ain't got nothing to do with it. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It is his need that is driving him. It is his faith, which he got more of it because he knew Jesus was moving on his behalf. He got faith. Now his faith is even stronger. But it's just like us, when we're waiting on God to do something for us, our faith gets strong because we believe he's moving on our behalf. And then, all of a sudden, we don't hear nothing from God. We don't see nothing changing. So all of a sudden, we got in a hurry to get to him. But now we are waiting on Jesus, the one who's everywhere all the time. We're waiting on him to and, and, you know, you get into a little attitude, waiting on Jesus to decide to come on and see about me. So he found himself in a position of waiting. At first, he was moving. Now, all of a sudden, he's waiting. And the thing about it is, not only did he turn around, but he's asking, who is this? He's taking up time trying to find out who this woman is. Now, the ruler probably didn't really care. Let's just be for real. Because all he's thinking about 
is what he asked Jesus to do. And now for some reason, his blessing is being held up. So he don't get it. Because you got to realize there was a big crowd of people out there. There's a lot of people out there. And then Jesus stops from following you and turn around and ask him a question about who touched my clothes. All these people out here. And even his disciples made up. Master, you, you, all these people out here. And you want to know who touched your clothes? Not who touched you. Who touched your clothes? Now, for me, if I was the ruler and he's looking around talking about who touched my clothes and my baby is dying, I don't care who touched your clothes. Why is that so important? So because we see, all we see is what God allows us to see in a situation. We hear what he allows us to hear. It wasn't for the ruler to know everything about the woman. But it was, for, it was Jesus' decision to have her come into his presence. See, sometimes we're not good with what Jesus decides, okay? So it was Jesus' decision to turn around and to personally acknowledge her. And she became the receiver of a now blessing while you still waiting on yours. Even though you hurried up and got up there, you got to him first, as a matter of fact. But now you have to wait. But you see, the thing about it is, is Jesus is in the blessing business. He's blessing all the time. It's just like if you are at your job, you have several offices. All of them have a duty to that company that they must perform. If one office gets off, the work don't stop. The work does not stop. If one employee gets off, the work does not stop. If they're acting the nut, it does not stop the work. The work must go forward. You have to deal with the one. You have to deal with that office because you want everybody to come together and be on one accord. But in business, you can't stop because of one. Okay? You just can't. And Jesus is in the business. So he can't just stop and just deal with you and your one situation. He got to keep it going. And sometimes you have to make an adjustment on your way to the finished product. And that because there are other things that demand your attention that you can't leave them undone to go and finish what you started. Jesus never lost his focus. He just turned around. And see, and sometimes we like I said, we're not in agreement with how he does things and what decisions that Jesus makes because we cannot see what that woman has gone through for the last 12 years. All we can see if we're looking back. Now, I'm saying if he looked back and realized Jesus is stopped, now he's looking to see what he's doing, and there's a woman down at his feet. He don't know what went on with that, you know. As it, him, to him, Jesus didn't stop, turned around, and now you're having a conversation with somebody. I'm right here. I'm still waiting, Jesus. Remember me? You was following me. You, we were on the move for me. And he can't see. We can't see, y'all. We cannot see when God is doing for others because all we know is what we're going through. And we sure enough need Jesus. And that's when the, and that's when the turnaround happens. I say sometimes, and, I'm, and I encourage myself as well as others, when you ask God for something and he don't do it right away, don't think he's not doing anything. He is always on the move. And it seems like he has forgotten about us. He ain't forgot about you. He has no problem with focus. Jesus don't have a problem with focus. We do. We do. So he doesn't go by what we're thinking because we came to him in faith in the first place. And he receives us right then, right there. It does not matter the challenges that we meet between the time we asked him and the time he actually gives us our blessing and how what we think while we're waiting. He is not going by that. He's not going by how much you cried while you waited. 
He's not going by how you slipped and messed up and said the wrong thing while you waited. He's not going by any of your mishaps, your misfunctions, anything that you did that was out of the ordinary because you're stressing out because you have lost your focus on Jesus. He's not, he hasn't lost his focus on you. He's still on his way. He's still coming. And he may have, he may not come when you want him, as they say. But when he gets there, I don't care what time it is, it's on time. And we are glad about it. Amen. So I just wanted to encourage us today to know that we're going to go to him. And we're going to plead our case before him. And yes, we want him what seemingly looked like a now blessing for that woman to us and to the ruler. We want that to happen for us because we see in her as getting a blessing now. She got the blessing now. I'm trying to get to mine. She got the now blessing. But you don't know her story. You don't know that that woman been dealing with this. This is not a now blessing for her. 12 years in the making. And you see the blessing part. And you don't know her story. And you think that her blessing is not as important as yours. God help us. Because we're guilty of that. Because when we're thinking about how much we need God in a situation and we see that other people are getting this, it appears that they're getting this and they're getting it now, they're getting it now, they're getting it now. You don't know how long they have suffered something to get to the place where they can even know that God is blessing them. Because some people don't even know when they're being blessed. They don't have that relationship. This man had a relationship already. He had a relationship. So we just want to, uh, I want everyone to just think about that. Think about that God is in the blessing business. Okay, and we do, when we have a problem, we need to hurry up and take it to him. We need to get it to him first. Don't, I see sometimes we run to mom and daddy because we know they right there. And we can see them and we can hear them on the phone. And that's all well and good. And you're supposed to run to those that love you for advice. But don't, you, you really need to go to Jesus first. Because sometimes you can even go to mama and daddy. And they may have some issues. And they may not be able to, and they're not trying to. But sometimes they got some stuff they're dealing with. And they're not going to put it off on you because you're their child. But that don't mean that their situation is not going on with them. And they may not be able to fully advise you in the way that you need to be advised because they're dealing with something as well. But nevertheless, go to Jesus first. Hurry up and go to him. Don't delay. Get, get it to Jesus because he will hear your call and he will answer it. It might not always be the answer that you want, but he will not leave you hanging. He will not. And always go in faith and believing that God can and he will do what is needed in your situation that's going to be effective and it's going to grow you. And it's going to put you in a place where you'll be able to testify about his goodness, his grace, and his mercy toward you and that he is no respectable person. So what he did for you, he'll do it for me. What he did for me, he'll do it for you. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on like that. And that don't stop. Because he don't stop. So take it to Jesus. Make your plea unto the Lord. Do it in a hurry. Get him involved in your situation ASAP, as soon as possible. Because you need Jesus in every situation that you come up on in your life. But don't get upset when it seems like Jesus has made turned around and started helping somebody else along the way. Always trust and believe in the first thing you did. You took it to him and he took it up on himself. And he's going to come to you and he's going to work some things through you and everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So if it seems like he's turned around in your situation right now, just keep waiting on him. Because I believe this. I don't believe that ruler just kept running without him. He waited on Jesus. He waited on him. He probably wasn't happy about it, but he waited on him because he knew what he had took Jesus, took to Jesus and he knew Jesus was following him. And Jesus was moving on his behalf, so he continued to wait. And when he waited, Jesus went on. As that when he said he turned around, in spite of the messengers and, and everything that was coming in, in some of these accounts of this story, 
He said that if the messengers came to let him know that she wasn't sick, that she had passed on, and you guys, you can leave Jesus alone right now because she's dead. Jesus heard that. Jesus was like, I'm on my way. Your faith, not what, not what these messengers have come and told you. It was your faith from the beginning of our acquaintance here. From the beginning, that's what I'm moving on. Not what others say about your situation. God does not move according to what your mama say, what your daddy say, them over there and them over here say. He moves according to his decision on what he have desired and designed your life for and what he wants you to be able to do and what he's going to do. He does not move based on what others think or say. He is a good God. And we just thank him and we praise him for who he is. And I want you to know that God has not lost his focus on you. I let myself know God has not lost his focus on me. And I want, I said, just as much as we want him to focus on us, we need to focus on him. Because he is still in the blessing business. We have did our plea. He may seem like he's turned around, but he is still blessing us. And we thank him and we praise him for what he is doing. And I just encourage us today to know that no matter what it seems like, y'all, no matter what is going on, this is one of my favorite sayings, and, and I'm going to leave you with this saying. And I've said it for many times. I said, no matter what is going on in your life, or in the life of those that you care about. Even in your darkest days, there is always a praise. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you, Lord. I just pray that this uh, word has been an encouragement to those who have listened. And I hope that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that you see how important it is that you get now, I'm praying that today that for those of you who have not made that decision, that um, that you would give us a call or, or send us an email here at Greater Galilee because we will be very, very, very grateful and honored to help you and make, to aid you as you make a decision to follow Christ. As you accept him as your Savior in your life, the one who can you can go to when you have a problem and know that he is the one that's able to take care of you. All you gotta do is believe that he lived. You gotta believe that he died, because he did. He went to that cross and he suffered for our sins. But you know what? That grave could not hold him because he definitely got up and he's alive and well today. And he's looking for you. And he wants you to come and do that which he has purpose for you all your life, which is to please him. And he knows that you need a relationship with him because you cannot know what pleases one unless you have a relationship with them. And he wants you. He wants you just as you are. He wants you because he's the one that's going to form you into what you need to be. You don't, you're not able to do that yourself. But we do encourage you to please come on in. Come on in to the family. There's always been a place for you. And there always will be. And we just pray, we just pray that something has been said that would encourage your hearts to just uh, get a closer walk with Jesus for those of you who are already walking with him. And uh, something that we can encourage others with to let them know that, that he's always working things out on our behalf. And I thank you and praise you for this opportunity. And I'll just say to God be the glory. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for your word. Lord God, we thank you for those who were able to listen and hear your word, Father. We pray that something has been said or done here, Lord God, in this moment that will affect them from this point on, Lord God, in a way that is positive, Lord God, prospering their way in you, Lord. Lord God, we just pray that all Everyone is staying safe, that everyone continues to keep one another held up in prayer, knowing that we are not alone, that there are many others that affect our lives, and that we ourselves affect others' lives, 
even those that never come and tell us, Lord God. We have an audience, Lord God, that is ever present. And Lord God, we pray that in your word, Lord God, that we will find a place that will allow us to be a light to these people that see us, Father. A light that cannot be hid, Lord God. Lord God, that we are shining bright and we're shining in your glory, Father. That they may see you, Father, in our lives. We just thank you and praise you, God, for all that you've done. All that you're doing. And we know you are ever doing, God. Again, we say thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name.